What's fractional investing? Will I still get dividends? And can I vote on my shares? Why are there fractions in the first place? Hi friends, in this video I'll share with you all you need to know about fractional investing with 5 pros and 4 cons to help you get started. As a bonus, there's also a strategy that can dramatically reduce your stock specific risk in one go with fractional investing that I'll share later on in the video. If you'd like to know, keep watching. Welcome back to the Updive channel, the best place for finance, investments and money topics for beginners looking for simple and easy explanations. I've been in finance for nearly 15 years in banks, hedge funds and financial services and I think it's just useful to share with you some of the things that I've learned so you can pick and choose, cherry pick some of those knowledge and hopefully become a better investor. Before we dive right in, punch that like button. It's down there. It looks like this. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell and you get weekly super useful investing made easy videos. By the way, are you already doing fractional investing? Yes or no? And what's your approach? You know, please leave it down in the comments below because I'd love to know. All right, let's get right to it. So there are many similar terms to fractional investing. Micro investing, stock slices, partial investing, they all mean the same thing. And it's been increasingly used because many companies which are like dominant leaders of their own industry and growing, you know, like Tesla, Google, and Amazon, their shares are super expensive. So those three companies, you know, one share each, so just three shares, will set you back $5,000. So instead of buying a whole share of a company, now you can buy less than one share. So in dollar amounts, you can invest $100, $5, or $1. So why does fractions of shares exist? It originally came because companies, listed companies, would do things like stock splits or mergers and acquisitions. It's probably easier to explain via a stock split. So let's say you hold 15 shares in some company, and this company announces they will do a three for two stock split. So every two shares you have will now become three. And in terms of mathematics, it's just 15 multiplied by three over two. So now instead of 15 shares, after the stock split, you will now have 22.5 shares. So that half a share is now fractional share. You don't suddenly get richer with more shares. It's just like slicing a cake into smaller slices. So let's talk about the five pros and four cons of fractional investing. You no longer need a ton of money to get started investing. So I've shown 10 different stocks here from the more expensive Amazon at $3,300 to all the way to NEO, which is around $60. But if you wanted to buy one share of each of these 10 stocks, you need more than $7,000. But with fractional investing, you could invest $5 in each of these companies. So $50 to get started in these 10 companies. You get exposure on the upside and downside as well. The second thing is you still get dividends with fractional investing. So let's say you invested $10 in a $20 stock. So instead of one share, you own half a share. And then this $20 stock, it pays out $2 in dividends. Now, because you only own half a share, so you will receive half of that $2, which is $1 in dividends. Drips work great with fractional investing, so dividend reinvestment plans. So let's stick to the same example where you only invested $10 in a $20 stock and it paid out $2 in dividends where you receive a dollar. Now, without fractional investing, you only received a dollar, right? But that stock cost $20. So theoretically, you need to wait 20 years before you can actually reinvest to acquire a new stock. But with fractional investing, you can immediately use your dividend payment to acquire more of that shares and build a position that obviously entitles you to a bigger dividend payment if the company pays again because you own more shares. The fourth great thing is now you can diversify with less money. You know, with $100, you can put $10 in 10 companies. Now, I won't go too much into diversification here, but if you have a question on how many stocks you should hold, what's the optimal amount so you can balance between good performance and diversification, be sure to check out this video here because this is a 30 minute rundown holy package on how to get started in the stock market. And in within, I also answer how many stocks you should hold. Now, the last advantage is if you have a savings or investment plans where you plan to you know, save amount of money, let's say $100 or $200 each month, you can immediately put that money to action. You no longer have to wait to, before you can afford to buy a share, but immediately use that and start investing. Now let's talk about the four cons or things that you need to avoid with fractional investing. The first thing is, because now it's so easy and cheap to actually diversify, Something that you actually want to avoid is having too many eggs in too many baskets. 
because nobody actually built wealth by having too many baskets. So what you actually want to do is slim down, have a few eggs, have a few baskets and watch those baskets. Fractional shares will have lower liquidity, maybe aside from the biggest stocks. It's because what happens behind the scene is your broker will actually wait for different fractional shares until it becomes a whole share before it is executed in the market. That is why your buy and sell orders will actually be filled slower because there is a waiting time. So for stocks that have voting rights, with fractional shares, you probably don't have any. So when companies hold annual general meetings or AGMs, having half a share isn't really entitled to half a vote. See, what happens is your broker actually holds onto your fractional share, but they actually hold the whole share, but they just divide it up internally. So when the broker receives a dividend, they divide it up and split it between the fractional shareholders. But with votes, it's really, really hard to do. That's why you're not really entitled to any partial votes for your partial shares. The last thing is, it's very hard to transfer partial shares to another broker. I mean, the only way you can do it is sell out on the market cash it in and then transfer it to another broker. But transferring the shares to another broker, that's very difficult to do. And here are three things that you need to ask your broker before you actually pick and choose any one of them. Well, the first thing is ask them, do they charge any commissions or fees for fractional investing? Because if they do, pick someone else. The second thing is ask what is the minimum buy-in. Some brokers say $5, some brokers say $1, some actually have no floor at all. There's no actually recommended best practice here, but it's for you to be better informed. The last thing is, ask your broker, what is the range of shares and stocks that you're allowed to do fractional investing? Some say it will be the top 50 stocks um, that are the largest, obviously, in the market. Some say only in the S&P 500, or some have a whatever, whatever range. So just be sure to ask uh, before actually choose and pick any particular broker. So I mentioned early on in the video about a way where you can dramatically reduce a stock specific risk with fractional investing, and that is you can also fractionally invest in ETFs. For those who don't know, ETF stands for exchange traded funds, and they're basically funds that are traded like stocks on the markets. For those who aren't really comfortable or don't have time in choosing stocks, a fractional investing in ETFs could indeed be the strategy for you. With fractional investing in ETFs, you immediately gain two benefits. One is convenience in investing because you no longer need to manage your own portfolio. The fund actually does it for you. The second thing is you immediately also gain diversification without constructing your own portfolio because the fund holds a basket of stocks. And so by definition, that's already a diversified investment. With fractional investing in ETFs, you can supercharge your diversification. And for those who still have questions about uh, what's the difference between ETFs and index funds, be sure to check out this video where I go all in deep dive to tell you about the four differences between each so you can be informed and choose what's right for you. So I hope this video was helpful for you to get you up to speed about fractional investing. But if you still have any questions, remaining questions on this topic, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below. And lastly, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.